to me it's a very iconic South African animal. <laughs> it's a dung beetle and it's tiny, it's an insect, but what I want to do is weave its life into the life of an elephant. What you've got to think about is where you're going to get some food in this environment and uh, pretty much what are you going to eat and if you're an elephant then this is really all that's available to you is the vegetation that's around us this guy here he's probably about 15 percent nitrogen couldn't tell it by looking at it could you this is what he's eating and that's around about 4% nitrogen. So how is he going to turn that into that? And the way he does it is by eating a lot. This guy has given up around about 1% nitrogen. He can't get that last bit of nitrogen out of there. This guy here is able to pick that nitrogen out by sorting out the tiniest particles in there. We've measured the size of those particles. They're around about 300 microns in size and a micron is a thousandth of a millimeter and if you think about it it is re really part of the beautiful cycle of nature that the the plants take the nitrogen out of the ground they form it into their bodies the elephants eat this they digest what they can out of it they form it into their bodies they produce this waste which then goes back into the ground and the nitrogen gets released into the ground and then the plants can pick it up again. It's fairly obvious how these animals are completely dependent on each other to cycle nutrients through any ecosystem. Elephants have got extreme examples of maternal care. Have you noticed how they haven't allowed us to get between Zambezi and his mum? If you get between those two, you're going to be in trouble. They are very, very good mothers, and the matriarchs are basically the leaders of the herd. They are good mothers. Believe it or not, these things are extremely good mothers. Dung beetles, particular species, show extreme maternal care. So she'll bury a ball underground, she'll lay an egg in it, and then she will sit with that ball until the new adult emerges. So she sits with the baby and she talks to it. Why do you think she communicates with the baby? To make sure he's there. To make sure the baby's there. Why, is she make, why does she need to make sure the baby's there? She can um, not go and make another egg. Exactly, because if the baby's died, then she should cut her losses and go and make another one. But if the baby's alive, the larva is alive, she basically guards the outside of the ball. She takes fungus off the outside. She keeps termites away from it. And she will stay underground for three months, it could be six months, and if it's a bad year, it's a drought year, she could be underground for 12 months wow. waiting for her offspring to what emerge. She, eat? she eats the outside of the ball. What does that do to her reproduction? How many babies can she have? One a year, maybe two, she has a two good seasons. How long does she live? About three years for a big species. So how many offspring can this thing produce? About six offspring. Elephants, what's their reproductive output? Well, thing we don't know. It's about six, yeah, but it's about six offspring in, in their total life. So these two organisms at completely different ends of the spectrum, in terms of size and body structure and lifestyle, have got about the same reproductive output because they are so such good parents. They invest in parenting that they ensure the, the survival of their offspring. I think it's fairly obvious in terms of conservation what we're looking at here is that it's not a case of looking after him. It's not a case of looking after him either. There are actually 800 species of dung beetles in South Africa. You cannot look after them all. 
The way we can conserve them together is to conserve the habitat. And in that way, we keep all of the organisms in the habitat in a functioning habitat. And that's, to me, the message for conservation. And I'll steal um, um, an analogy from a guy called E.O. Wilson. And what he has likened the, the ecosystem to is an aeroplane. We can keep pulling species out of the ecosystem, but at some point, the plane is going to fall out of the sky. And that's why we have to get involved in things like this and we have to think about conservation and we have to think about conservation in the biggest terms we possibly can and we have to think about conserving habitats.